Yeah, I don't know. It's weird to be on this side of everything. <laughs> But I am giving a talk on uh, 3D cave mapping with the Cavatron LiDAR system. Uh, as I'm sure most of you know, I am David Gianforte. I live down in Bozeman. Uh, I've been caving and uh, involved with the NRMG since 2020, and it's all Will's fault, so you can blame him. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and I've worked on the, uh, the Bighorn Horse Thief uh, survey project. So I have a video. That's not what I wanted to happen at all. So I've done three separate, I'm going to start with the big flashy thing, the video. So I've done three different um, uh, LiDAR scans of the Horse Thief Cave, and this is all the data from that. So I will just run this. This is like two and a half minutes. So it starts at the gypsum wall, kind of in the low part, and it'll initially follow the D-line um, up and then through the spit hole, kind of down through this low crawl. Uh, so this is all, all the 3D, kind of one interpretation of all the 3D data that was gathered. Uh, oh, look, there's me. <laughs> then this is the red Buddha, this kind of big room that wraps around. Uh, yeah, then it goes up over here, and then it kind of gets a little narrow and you have to drop down through this crack, and then it kind of goes down a slope, and then into kind of an area with a bunch of boulders. This part's really tricky to even navigate, so it's kind of helpful to like remember where I need to go <laughs> when I go in there, but there's kind of a low, a low section and then you pop up into the, the little room that has the dinosaur back. So it'll kind of, it'll spin around and show that. So that's the, the dinosaur back right there. D, and we're still along the D line. And then we'll go into one room here. And then in the next room, down on the right, is where you get to the mind bender area. So mind bender is down on the right. And then looking up, I think that's like the F line or something, but there's some other line over there. Now the video is going to jump back to early on in the, on the D line, and it'll follow the U line. Oh, yeah, it's like a roller coaster. Uh, this is like the what's what we've named the chandelier room because it has a bunch of big gypsum formations that have fallen off the ceiling. Uh, some nice passage through here. There's me again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think it, it helps to add some scale. Yeah. Yeah, cl <laughs> clones. <laughs> okay, and then this is near the end. There's kind of a, a squeeze up through a crack, and then you get... Um, this is kind of where the, the roped-off section of the cave is, at kind of halfway down the U-line, just before you get to Three Fingers and, and out there in the pancake area. And, uh, and that's all that I've scanned so far which is only a tiny part of the cave. Okay, we can go back here, hopefully. Okay, so that was really cool. Uh, how did I do that? The <laughs> using the Cavatron LiDAR system. So the, uh, just as kind of some history of the, of the Cavatron project itself, right? So LiDAR uses a laser to measure distances many times per second. This unit uh, can run at 8,000 samples per second. The, the Cavatron project was started by Joe Mitchell in 2018. He's a caver down in Texas, and he designed the whole thing, um, released all of the, the plans, the build instructions. Um, everything is up on, on his website and GitHub available for free. The, uh, it uses pretty much off-the-shelf components and a 3D printed enclosure, uh, and it's, it, it's designed specifically for mapping caves, so there's a bunch of unique features that it has that you won't find in like a commercial LiDAR system that are, are very specific to cave mapping. And the total cost is like 600 to $700, you know, compared to like, if you go and buy the like, the cheapest Likea LiDAR scanner, it's like $10,000, so uh, a little bit more affordable. Um, and yeah, this is the, the, the Cavatron website, cavatron.com. 
Again, it has all the plans, all the software, uh, everything that is needed for this. The, so the build, so I have the unit here. This is it. Um, and I kind of want to show just the build process. Uh, it, you start with the 3D printed enclosure. You have to build a special window with plexiglass um, to kind of weatherproof or weatherproof and dustproof the whole thing. And then there's all the components kind of laid in there. You see the rotating LiDAR unit down there, and then all the other electronics that are needed over there, and the battery. And then the, the finished unit is there, and it's got a little touch screen. Uh, I know I'm moving all over the place. Ha ha ha. So that's kind of roughly how it looks going together. Um, how does it actually work? It uses, um, well, first of all, Ignoring any of the fancy LiDAR stuff, this unit has everything in it that a Disto X has in it as well. And that's how you reference to the points to, uh, to reference your scan. So you have these reflective cards that you put at your station that you're referencing from. And then the unit itself, you aim the laser at the, the reflective card and you can reference where you are. The unit can reference where it, where it is in space based on a, a fixed point. And then the, how the LiDAR scanning actually works is in the front of this unit, there's a rotating uh, LiDAR unit that scans in a plane. So it's scanning a plane. And then you accomplish your, your LiDAR scanning by moving towards your reference point and it scans around you. Um, so if you're scanning a passage, then you walk through the passage and it scans it as you go through. Alternatively, you can also hold the unit in place and kind of rotate it around so it can kind of sweep the wall and get and collect data that way. Yeah, I think I covered all that. I, yeah, I can mention the... Uh, this unit has a range of 12 meters and uh, collects 1,000 points per rotation. So I've used this in, a, in, a, in the Horse Thief Cave three different times, the, uh, back in 2021 and 2022, just, uh, just kind of as a little experimental thing in between the, uh, the, main, the main work of surveying the cave. Um, so that's when all the data was collected. So you can kind of get a sense for the, you know, the video you saw and the amount of cave passage that can be scanned in the amount of time uh, that I spent in the cave. So it's, I think it's a little faster than really good paper survey, but it's still a pretty slow process. It's a pretty slow process of, you know, setting up your stations, you know, you gotta like shuffle along, shuffle along as you're doing the scan. And it's a pretty slow process, so it's not like you're just waltzing through the cave and, and collecting all your data that way. Here's what the data processing looks like. You start off with very raw looking data where every individual scan is listed out and then it shows you. So this is like a single rotation worth of data where it creates a cross section of the cave effectively. And then this shows, this is a top-down view where I was walking through the cave following the yellow line, and then these outermost points are the walls that it was seeing as I was walking through the cave. So you start off with some very raw data, and you kind of do some initial processing, and you end up with a point cloud where all the scans are now referenced to your survey markers, and you have all these points in space so this is, this is actually the spit hole here. It's a fairly well-defined feature that you can see. Um, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of different things that you can do with this data. But about the only thing I've done so far is turn it into a 3D model. So this is a 3D model of the same thing. And now we're kind of outside the cave looking at an inverse shape of the cave. So you can create these, these kind of 3D models. Um, and that's what I used to create the video that you saw earlier is, is by processing all that point cloud data into a 3D model. Uh, 
and there's a bunch of other cool stuff that you could do. I've seen people do like 3D prints of like the inverse of a cave. Would be kind of fun, maybe if I had some more data. Uh, yeah, I did want to thank, just thank some people like Joe Mitchell, obviously, for designing the whole thing, Will for the horse thief uh, resurvey project, and then Dustin, Kirk, Colin, Aaron, and Adrian for helping me survey on those specific days. Uh, I think that's all I have for now, although I certainly have a little bit of time for questions. Um, I have some contact info. The, um, I should also mention the NRMG website for the Bighorn Horse Thief Survey Project has all of my data on it. So if you want to download the point cloud data that I have, um, that I've collected, you can do that in the, on the website. I think there's a link to the Google Drive where all of the survey data is and my LiDAR data is in there as well. Uh, question. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, unfortunately, this unit is not designed with nearly the same tolerances that a disto has. So, even the the point to point survey data is not nearly as accurate. Um, so, it's this is definitely not a replacement for a disto, just because the accuracy isn't there. Um, but when we are when I am lidaring a cave, I do use the same survey markers that we put in initially with the disto survey, uh, just because it's easiest to use existing points. There's no need to add a whole separate set of points. So um, yeah, I don't think it's a replacement for traditional survey. Maybe, maybe, yeah, like, <laughs> like, the, obviously the main limitation with this unit right now is that it only scans in a plane. So you have to physically move the thing everywhere that you want to scan. If you had um, a 3D scanner that could scan a whole sphere, you could just put it somewhere and it would be much more accurate than um, a different type of scan or than this type of scan. But again, that's a more expensive thing. So um, I think it's possible that LiDAR could help supplement traditional survey and, and could definitely help make a, a map as we currently know them. Um, but there's also a lot of really cool stuff that you could do too. Like you, I could put a 3D model on the website and you could just click and drag and you would tilt the cave all over the place and be able to kind of visualize it in a, in a whole new way as well. Yes. Yes, so in theory, this unit is completely waterproof. It's uh, certainly designed to be waterproof. It has rubber, rubber seals where the plastic pieces come together, and then the, um, the window has a uh, like caulk on there to kind of seal it up. So in theory, it is all waterproof. Um, I don't know how much I trust that. Thankfully, Horse Thief is a, is a dry cave for the most part, so I haven't really had to test that yet. Oh, where it's actually imaging. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly. Well, okay, yeah, Will knows, of course. <laughs> That's his, he's, yeah, he's a LiDAR technician, so he knows. I would guess that like the laser would refract through the water and you probably wouldn't get very good readings. Or, okay. Yeah, yeah, like if it's muddy water, then it would just absorb it. Or. You might, it might be able to read it, actually, if it's muddy water. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it would, I don't, I don't know exactly, I don't know. It would probably lead to some kind of messy data, <laughs> so I don't know. Um, it's like a couple hours or a few hours. It's not really that bad. 
Because um, a lot of, like, if I go back to this stuff, like, this, this stuff, it's like, okay, you got to kind of set it up, but then you can kind of click through each one pretty quickly and just kind of just do a spot check, make sure the data looks okay, and then export it. And then you kind of drag them all into here, you have your point cloud, and then it's just like a, to convert from a point cloud to the 3D model is like a one button process. It does it automatically for you, but it just takes, it can take a little bit of time to run. But yeah, like, I don't know. And of course, I be doing this for the first time, I spent many, many hours just messing with it. But if you kind of get your process dialed in, it's not really that bad, I don't think. Okay, thanks, Will. <laughs> He's telling me to wrap it up. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, well, I think that's it. So uh, thank you for coming to my talk. <laughs> <laughs>